Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for the last episode of 2011. This is the New Year's Eve special episode. As you can see, I got quite a few sparkling wines here, or sparklers, to uh, go through. And on this side, I've got someone. Uh, I got I got live. I got UStream going. I think I've got my issue. Man, that's kind of loud, isn't it? Let's turn that down just a little bit on that side. Okay. So. Um, Still looks like it's pretty loud. Okay, um, I got the UStream going again. Uh, I'm trying to do this. I try to do this a little more often. Um, I've been having a lot of problems with trying to get this live streaming thing happening. I thought I had it all nailed down because I try. I was doing experimentation, did some experimentation, and then the last time I tried this was the uh, was the uh, episodes we did at uh, Ceci Barreto's wine shop. Man, that, the, the laptop was locking up everything. I don't know what was going on. So I just kind of, I had just like closed the laptop and said, forget it. Let's not even bother with it for like the last episode, I think. Um, today I tried to do this a little more and I think I've narrowed it down to, um, there's, an, there's a little app that's supposed to improve your webcam on Mac, on Mac devices uh, called iGlasses. I didn't seem to really have any problems with the iMac. But on the laptop, it seems to be an issue with it. I don't know if I need to update it. I don't know if there's a bad installation. I also was trying. Another, I was also going to try a new service called Livestream because uh, I saw a, a live stream broadcast on it. It looked like it was pretty good quality. Um, that kept crashing. It kept installing bad. It might have something to do with eyeglasses. I don't know. I've switched over to just using the regular webcam. It looks just fine for the purposes of UStream um, because also with uh, the Flash Media Encoder. I think the eyeglasses was conflicting with it, so um, we'll play with that a little bit later. So anyway, that's a little update for anyone watching on Ustream. I tweeted it out. I have one guest. I don't know who the guest is. They're not saying hi, but that's okay. Um, not like I'm going to be being able to type a lot. So um, let's get into the wine. Now. Um, I went into World Market to buy the wine, and, and I had the intent of only buying like three bottles, like I normally do. So I go in, and the, you know they have a nice sparkling wine display, pretty much as soon as you walk in the door. And these three wines were there, and I was like, okay, you know, well, not just these three; I had more than these three. And I was looking at them, like, all right, prices and all that, and where they were. And I was like, well, let's let's kind of do a variety. And the idea was no champagne. So I've got these three wines, and I decided to go back to the regular wine area because I'll buy some other wines while I'm there. I mean, I can't not do that. Um, I do love going into World Market, by the way. Uh, matter of fact, you should be doing ads on my show. Anyway, um, more of that later. Not more of that. Just that would be something I'd like to try to do is actually have ads in the show. Flip TV says I can do it uh, as long as it's not an infomercial. Um, so um, anyway. So I go in the back and I'm looking around, looking around, looking around, find some other wines I kind of alluded to uh, on the uh, Christmas episode, and I find this wine. So um, this wine, besides it was in a bright shiny silver bottle, um, this is a wine that I've, I've had the Austrian version recently um, of Sect, S-E-K-T, um, and I had it at a wine tasting at Max's Wine Dive, and um, thought it was pretty cool. And then, um, I mean, nothing spectacular, but I was like, okay, I've had a sect. I've had a German or Austrian sparkling wine, but um, I haven't had a German one. And I figured I'd buy this one. Now, something about sect, it, it's, uh, it's not something that's necessarily widely available in the United States or outside of Germany. Um, it is the German word or the German version of sparkling wine. Um, there's some regulations involved with it. If it if it says uh, Sec Deutschester uh, or something like that, uh, did I have that on here? 
I may be, yeah, not Book of Knowledge. Just consult the Book of Knowledge real quick. And we'll look at Sect. So, yeah, it's, um, no, don't go there. If it says, uh, bum, 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 sect itself, well, if it's sect itself, it, it has to be made in the traditional method. Uh, it doesn't say method chimpanzé or, tr or traditional method, but basically the second fermentation is in the bottle. Um, maybe I should kind of back up a little bit about sparkling wine, but we'll, we'll go in this. Um, if it says uh, Schaumwein, it means foam wine, and that means that they uh, injected the CO2. Uh, the second fermentation was not done in bottle, or they injected CO2 into the bottle. They didn't do a second fermentation in it. And then there's another one called um, Pelvine, uh, which is semi-sparkling. Okay, so um, about 90% of all sect is made from wines from other countries. Okay. Um, or import, partially imported. Uh, Italy, Spain, France. Uh, yes, if it's Deutscher, Deutscher sect, it's all German grapes. Uh, if it doesn't say that, then it could be for anything. There's also a higher level um, called sect BA, uh, which is Bestimter Anbagitbeta. Anbagitbeta. You know my pronunciations are not the best, um, but basically um, that's from the, the the grapes came from the any of the 13 quality wine uh, growing regions of Germany. Which, if you didn't been at sommelier school, you will have seen that part. Um, all right, so they are usually, and I don't know what grapes are in this. It doesn't label it. There's nothing on here, and I can't find anything really substantial about the producer, Solberis sect. Um, it, at one time, on the back of the label it says Prestige Wine Company. Uh, imported it, but if you go to Prestige Wines website, there is nothing on this at all. So they must have dropped the brand. Um, well, Market carries it, probably dropped the brand at some point in time. You find that somebody else um, has done a trademark filing in the United States for, for this logo or for this brand. So um, not really sure what's going on with it. Can't find anything out on it. Don't know what the grapes are. Um, according to Wikipedia, in other sources, sect can be used, can be made from using Riesling, Pinot Blanc, Pinot Gris, and Pinot Noir. Um, no mention of Chardonnay, which is one of the traditional Champagne grapes. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about Champagne real quick. Champagne is an area in France, and really up until I'd say somewhat recently, um, the word Champagne has been bandied around for a lot of sparkling wines because that has the prestige, and uh, the French kind of got a little bit. I'm upset about it, understandably, um, and most of the countries around the world are having an agreement to not let producers in their countries to use the word champagne uh, on the bottles. Um, now they may use, they may say champagne method, or they may say method champagne, champagne, champagne. I, we're sassy when I need her for French pronunciations, and if I'm going to pass this. Certify wine educator thing at any point in time. I gotta get my pronunciations better. Um, right, right. Oh, hey, who do I have? World Wine Review. Hey, hi, how you doing? Um, anyway, so um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so you have to. Um, you, you can you can say traditional method or something like that to kind of denote that the second fermentation was in the bottle. Champagne itself. Um, that's how it's done. Uh, you may have heard some dude named Dom Perignon. Um, he's not the inventor of sparkling wine. As a matter of fact, he was hired by the Abbey in Epernay um, in the late 1600s to try to figure out how to prevent it because back then it was considered a fault in the wine because they didn't kind of know what was going on at first. All they knew is that in springtime the bottles started bursting. The corks were popping or bottles were literally exploding and when one exploded they all exploded. As a matter of fact, um, this bottle here, we'll get to that in a second, um, had some fun with that one. Um, but uh, he was actually hired to try to fix that, to try to prevent the second fermentation. Um, basically, the, it, it never happened. They, they kind of came, he kind of actually came up ways to say, hey, let's just kind of roll with it, and uh, came up with some uh, things about how to create champagne. Um, and then a bunch of myths got, you know, got created around him uh, about how things were done, how he invented champagne. So um, that's uh, that's kind of a little brief history of champagne. So sect, 
Let's uh, go with it now. Um, you traditionally will drink it in a tulip-shaped glass. Um, and the advantages of doing that, we'll pour a little bit in here first, um, is that it just kind of looks cool. Okay. Now, um, with the with the type of uh, glassware, um, what it does is it's supposed to help focus the the, the um, aromas. It also is easier to see the bubbles. I personally don't. If I'm reviewing champagne, I personally don't like reviewing out of these, um, just because I just like to be able to really swirl the wine, and you can't, I mean, you can swirl it, kind of, I mean, and it can't really aerate the wine. So I usually will review in these types of things, but I wanted to have that so, so you know that I'm not totally uncouth, and they actually have tulip classes to drink sparkling wine. Um, and this is how I would normally drink it at home, here, or elsewhere. All right, so um, let's go with the sect. Oh, by the way, um, I bought it for, uh, well, it's, it's priced at $16.99 at World Market. Because of the discounts they had going on, I paid $15.29. So, not cheap by any means. Um, Sect has kind of a bad, not bad reputation, but a reputation of not being like high quality. At least, that's the impression I get. Um, the, the regular Sect, not the you know, higher quality ones. So, let's check it out. Um, I get mostly apple out of this. Um, I don't get any of the typical bakery type of aromas that you get out of a, out of a champagne or even at, at most sparkling wines. I see all the little reflections. A tint of citrus, but not much else. So, um, cheers. Got a bit of sweetness to it, so this is not a. It says, it said brute. I thought on it. Maybe it didn't. No, it didn't. Okay, it didn't have any sweetness level on it. it it's it's a bit semi sweet. Um, so I, I would have to say that um, uh, it's not a very dry wine. Um, it's got a bit. Of, it's kind of tasty and all that, but um, it's not. Uh, it's not definitely not dry, like. A lot of people like the dry wine, so you have brute, extra brute, uh, that type of stuff. But um, it's got a bit of sweetness. Still more of the apples. Um, not much, not much um, citrus on it. Uh, very little acid. I don't get much acid at all on it. I'd say more moderate acid because I do get the mouth-watering feel. You kind of want to eat something, um, but it's not very high acid. It's not very focused. Uh, it's just kind of there. You know it's there. And it's kind of like you know drinking some sweeter wines. You don't get the sweetness kind of overpowers the ac the acidity. But um, it's not bad. I mean, it's tasty. It's got, like I said, a little bit of sweetness. So, you know, if you're looking for something a little different to serve on New Year's Eve or any other reason to drink sparkling wine, you don't have to drink it just for celebrations. I mean, I like to drink sparkling wines a lot of times as my first wine for dinner. Um, it's not bad. I mean, I'd give it probably like an 85. I mean, it's, I think it's a little pricey. I think it should be closer to under $15. So, I mean, it's, it's right around there. It's $16.99, right? So, not, not, I don't think it's outrageously priced, but it's, it's not, it's not, not bad. All right, let's move on. I got four more wines to do here. We'll dump that too. Put that off to the side. Okay, this one here. All righty. Uh, I don't think I think this one I had the information elsewhere. No, I had the information here. All right. So this wine is the Toso Brut from Argentina, non-vintage. By the way, this is also non-vintage, um, which you probably already saw in the lower third. Um, non-vintage Toso. Uh, from Argentina. Um, this is a 100% Chardonnay, uh, if I remember correctly, and actually I think it says on the bottle, um, Chardonnay. It's 100% Chardonnay. Oh, here we go. Boom. I got the little thing here. Uh, from the Mendoza area of, um, actually it's from the Barnacas Maipu district in Mendoza. Um, I bought this again at World Market for, I think this was actually relatively cheap. 
Yes, it was. It's priced at $10.99. I paid $8.89 after all the little discounts I got. So, this is kind of where I probably expected the sec to be at. I mean, I almost didn't buy the sec when I saw it was like 17 bucks. I was like, really? So, um, definitely got some good bubbles. Um, seems to be pretty effervescent on it. Let's see what the nose is like. Definitely a much different nose than the Sect, um, but it is all it is all Chardonnay. Um, again, not much, maybe a little sourdough bakery on it, because I get a bit of sourness, not not a bad sourness. We get a little bit of that. I don't get get much fruit, you know, or citrus or apple type of stuff that you can, that you'll tend to get with sparklers. But I, I guess kind of kind of a soury type of dough, pasta, but nothing nothing um, overpowering. It's just very very subtle there. Right on the palate again, I was getting that that uh, that pasta or or bakery type of thing. I got a hint of some fruit. Um, I'd actually kind of go apricot-ish, um, not not the apple type of stuff, but I'd I'd kind of go a little little on the apricot side of things. But uh, again, nothing nothing really. Um, Nothing really just out there for me. Um, moderate acid. Actually, I'm not. I'm not. Sal I'm actually salivating a little bit less than with the um, than with the sect. But um, again, the acid isn't very focused. Though in the mouth feel, I mean, it's very. There's a, a kind of creamy in the sense that there, all the foam is there. So you've got kind of a better mouth feel with it. It's not bad. I mean, and for for nine bucks, whatever it is, well, eleven no, nine bucks, right? Eleven dollars for eleven dollars. I mean, it's something that you could easily serve uh, at home uh, for any type of event, or like you said, you just want something to drink, a little sparkling wine you want to drink. Um, I still think it's about an eighty-five as far as a score, but um, not bad. And the fact that it's from Argentina was just something to to really um, to really just try out and, and kind of see what it was. I don't think it's um, I don't think it's a bad wine. I think it's actually pretty decent. But you know, 85. Yep. That'll work. Well quick. Okay, so you're like me and you open up a bunch of bunch of these bottles or you open up one and maybe you don't have a bunch of people over and you don't want to have to like drink the whole bottle in one sitting, especially since it's a carbonated drink. Um, so how do you preserve these things? Now I kind of mentioned this once before or a couple times before. These are, uh, the Vacuvin company makes these, I'm sure other companies make them. Um, it's something that you can use to help preserve the wine a bit. Now, unlike the regular Vacuvin where you pump air out, you don't pump anything out of here, but what it does is it helps keep the CO2 in, and as the CO2 is being produced, it's you know, getting rid of the oxygen. So you have to make sure you really get this on there pretty tight. The last time I had a sparkler, I didn't really do that. And then after about a day or two, it eventually kind of popped off. So you got to make sure you get all the way on there, close it off, and then you're good to go. All right. Um, I'm going to take this off right now. And then I think I mentioned before, it has a little pour spout thing. So you don't have to take the thing off. You just lift this back up and you're able to pour the wine. So real quick on that. Okay. Anyone else here? Cheers. Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, now I have someone whose name is Viewer. Oh, Viewer. Yeah. Oh, you were probably my guest earlier. I just said guest. All right, cool. All right. Um, let's see what else. Where are you from, uh, World Wine Review? Where are you from? Put in the little chat. I'll take a look at that real quick. Um, all right, so moving on. We've got the uh, Juve y Camps. Uh, this is from Spain. This is a Cava. Uh, Reserva de la Fim Familia, 2007. Uh, they even put the bottle number, Botella, uh, 35447. It is a Brut Nature 
Grand Reserve. Now that means it should be pretty darn bone dry. Um, as a matter of fact, that's kind of what I was looking for um, on uh, the who's he what's it here. The levels of dryness. I want to make sure I get them correct just because I um, haven't looked at them as recently as I haven't looked at them too recently. Here we go, sweetness. As long as it gets me to where I want to go. Um, Brut Nature should be like bone dry. The the like basically no no yeah fewer than three grams of sugar per liter. So well, this is called the Brut Natural Natural Nature. That's for this for Spain. Extra Brut is less than six grams. Brut is a little bit more. And then you have uh, uh, then they go up beyond that. You open a new tab. Yes, you can. So this is, should be bone, bone dry. A lot of Americans don't really want it that dry. They want a little bit of sweetness. So brute and extra brute are usually what they use. Um, and then you have extra dry, extra sec, extra seco. They all mean the same, even though it doesn't seem like it does. Um, and then you have dry, sec, seco, and then you have demi sec or semi seco, and then do, sweet, dulce. Now that was supposed to stay on all the time. Okay, Canada, awesome. Now I had that set so it wouldn't, so the screen wouldn't close off, and it just did. It should have not turned off, but anyway. Um, so I got this again at World Market, and this is from uh, Spain, like I said. Um, this is a combination of uh, Parada, Charello, um, Chardonnay, and I forgot what the last one is. It's on here. They have a flash website so you can't... Um, oh, Macabo. Yeah. Duh. I should have known that. Yeah, let's reduce that so I can see this. Okay. Um, I didn't have the percentages on it, but um, that's where they're from, and they're from a, a couple different areas uh, of their kava production. Kava... Like I said, uh, this is uh, regularly seventeen ninety nine uh, through all the discounts that I got, um, thirteen dollars and nineteen cents. So regularly seventeen ninety nine at World Market. Uh, it is vintage. So real quick on vintage stuff, um, champagnes and ports and other things like that will a lot of times have no vintage or they'll have a vintage. And the reason for that is if they feel that the, the, the vintage was a superior or really, really good quality, they'll actually put a year on it. Otherwise, most sparkling wines and champagnes are combinations of vintages. And what they'll do is they can only, well, in champagne, they can only use 80% of the current year for a vintage champagne. They have to keep, the 20, they have to keep at least 20% back to be able to use for blends. Um, I'm not really sure how the rest of the world regulates that, if at all, but... Um, uh, a vintage champagne means that everything did come from that year, whereas most of these other ones are non-vintage, and what it is is that they blend wines from other years, and what that really does is it gives you a house style. So the point is that they try to create a consistency among the years so that you know what you're going to get, or a style. Um, every once in a while, a year comes along, and they go, hey, this is really, really good, we're going to do everything from this vintage, and we're going to do that. So. Your vintage sparkling wines tend to be a little more expensive than um, non-vintage than they're supposed to be. So if there was a non-vintage version of this, it may not be 18 bucks. It might be, say, I don't know, 15 12 I don't know, whatever they would price it at. All right, so let's check it out. I'm really digging the nose here. Cheers again. Now this, I'm getting a little more fruit forward on the nose. I mean, it's, it's almost like tropical-ish, tropical fruit-ish. I want to say guava, but I can't remember the last time I smelled a guava. But that, I guess that's, the, the, that's what comes to mind. A lot of times, it's just the first thing that comes to mind is what you use, because somehow that's what your brain remembers. And it smells, there's like a fleshiness to it. Like, like kind of really more like a, a peach. 
like a peach smell, like the fuzzy part of the skin of that type of um, of that type of fruit. So maybe even a little bit of peach or nectarine in there too. I right, see how it tastes. All right, it's dry. There's no sugar residual sweetness, but you get the fruit flavor, so there's a perception of sweetness. Um, the acid is a little more focused. I, I, there, there's definitely a higher acid, con or it feels like there's an acid, higher acid content. It feels a little more focused. It feels like it's actually, you know, inside the boundaries of my tongue, where the other two is just kind of like, yeah, there's really nothing there. Um, so it feels like it's, it's focused a little more. Um, you're getting that bit of, of salivating, so, so you want to uh, drink more and eat more. Um, it's got, again, still that similar fruit characteristics. Um, it's, it's pretty tasty. Like I said, it's dry. Um, the problem is that people, when they talk about dry wines or sweet wines, they don't necessarily mean by the sugar level though many people do mean that they kind of mean the perceived sweetness because they're getting fruit flavors and it's not really an actual sugar level um, if that makes sense yeah just kind of a I even kind of think there's like kind of like a melon type of flavor to this. Again, a perceived sweetness, not really there. Uh, I think it's really good. I think it's better than the other two. I give it an 88 on the score meter there. Um, really, really good. So, um, <laughs> all right, uh, uh, World World Wine Review, have you had anything like this? Uh, have you had any sect, any Argentinian sparkling? Any, well, cava, I'm sure you've had cava. Um, a lot of people have had cava. Just to kind of go what cava is, Kava is, is it's not a one specific place um, in Spain. Most of the Kava production is in the Pe uh, Penedes, uh, Penedes, I'm sorry, region of Spain, which is kind of the northeastern part of Spain. But there are parts of Spain that have uh, Kava designations um, where they can get the, uh, they get the grapes from. Um, so it's not as tight as, like, say, Champagne, but most of the cava is restricted to one area in Spain. Um, and cava is definitely a great alternative to champagne. Um, it's usually a good value. Um, it's, I would say it's kind of like the next level. And I don't want to say that cava can't be equivalent to champagne. There are some cavas that are definitely equivalent to champagnes. But um, if you're looking for like a little bit cheaper, but but still pretty darn good quality when you want to rate with champagne. Cava is really the way to go. All right, next we're gonna go with. All right, this is a very famous name, uh, and I've actually honestly I've never had this, at least not the California version, um, but I've had uh, their their Spanish uh, their Spanish stuff here. So this is the uh, Gloria Ferrer Blanc de Blancs. This is a 2006. Uh, it says fermented in bottle, so basically the the uh, the traditional method. 2006, okay, vintage. Uh, and this is from uh, California, and actually it's a Carnero sparkling wine. Now, did I get the correct one? No, I didn't get the correct one off the website. I went to Sonoma by accident. Carnero. So actually, how about 2006 Blanc de Blanc? That's what this is. Um, bought this at World Market again for. I don't think this was too expensive. Here we go. Uh, no, it's regularly $18, and I paid $14.19 after all the little discounts that they were doing there that day. Um, so this is uh, something where they, uh, this is the same owners as um, fr uh, Freshenet. It's not Freshenet. It's not a French word. It's Freshenet. Um, another one of those things. See, you know, I do know how to pronounce, it, pronounce a few things. The weird ones I know how to pronounce, right? Um, so the same owners that, and back in the 80s, they wanted to grow, they wanted to, not grow, they wanted to produce some sparkling wine in California. So uh, Gloria is the, sorry, the wife of Jose, uh, they're the owners of uh, Freshenet, 
and uh, so they created this uh, winery out in, or they, they went out to, to uh, California to do uh, produce some wine, and they've been there for a while, so this is not something brand new, I mean, they've been doing it for a couple decades now, so, um, so yeah, um, one quick thing, all right, so, you know how you have these little things on here, the little cages, and then you have the cork and blah, blah, blah. Well, one little thing about opening champagne, which I didn't follow today, be very careful with them. Um, as soon as you take the foil off, and whether you take the cage off initially or not, open the stupid bottle. I was going to do open all the bottles at the same time, so I was just kind of like taking the foil off and taking the little things off. And um, while I was doing that, about to hit the fourth bottle of opening, the, the cork just went poof. So luckily nothing happened because there was just the ceiling, and, but so be careful. Anyway, uh, let's check it out. Interesting. Oh, real quick. So this is the Blanc de Blanc. Uh, typically, Blanc de Blanc means it's made from all white grapes in Champagne. Uh, those there there'll be no Pinot, uh, no be no Pinot Meunier. Now let's see if they put down exactly what the grapes are. I don't see it on the back of the label either. And here we go. Carnot Chardonnay. Okay, so it's just Chardonnay. Um, well, yeah, it only be Chardonnay because the other two grapes are they call black grapes or red grapes. So yes, it's Blanc de Blanc is 100% Chardonnay because the other grape is Pinot Noir that they use. Okay, so so really, really getting like a again kind of a sour again not in a bad way but kind of like a sourdough thing um, that's really the dominant thing that I'm getting maybe a little bit of fruit on the nose pasta a little bit or pasta as the uh, Brits say and see uh, I've tried Champagne, German, Aussie, Canadian, Italy, but not RG. Okay, cool. Yeah, I haven't had any Canadian sparkling wine yet. I've had some ice wine. Well, no, I haven't had Canadian ice. Yeah, I have. Once. Alright, so yeah, I get that type of... Yeah, just kind of like that, that... Again, the bakery type of thing where it's a bunch of sourdough. All right, let's take let's uh, taste it. There is a bit of creaminess to it. Um, the bakery part isn't, or the pasta and, and bakery part isn't as prominent on the palate. You get in the kind of apple-y type of uh, flavors to it, a little bit of citrus. The uh, acid isn't as focused, but it's, it's more than these two here. So it's a little bit more acid, uh, but it's definitely got sweetness to it. I didn't see what, if it had a sweetness level listed on here. It doesn't say, or if it does, I don't see it anywhere. No, I don't see it anywhere. Okay, so, um, you know, it's, you know, I'd say it's probably, you know, an extra brute, maybe a little bit higher, but like I said, most American palates don't go any sweeter than extra brute because then they kind of think it's too sweet. Um, so the brute, extra brute is usually what Americans will go for. Be careful, stuff's popping out. Um, yeah, it's, it's got a bit of acidity, a bit of sweetness, a little bit of that fruit, like I said, kind of apple y citrusy. Um, there's a little bit of a touch of creaminess to it. It's pretty decent. Uh, I'm going to say it's about its equivalent of, of a cava, um, so about an 88. Um, I don't think it's necessarily hitting anything out of the ballpark. But this is a good value to get, and um, like I said, it's it's something another alternative to getting champagne. 
All right, moving on. The last one. I hope this isn't like a 40-minute episode here. All right. Now, this one I didn't buy, and this one was, I wasn't, I had no intention of, initially I had no, well, I didn't have it when I bought these. Um, and after I got it, I hadn't really intended to, intended to review it necessarily just because I didn't buy it, but that's okay. This was actually bought for me, or as a present, um, the general manager of the place I work at uh, bought all the managers a bottle of champagne. Now, when I looked at the label at first, I, I didn't really, I didn't, I guess I didn't pay attention to the fact that it said champagne. I said, I saw Kirkland. Well, Kirkland is the house brand of Costco. Um, and then I was like, wait a minute, it says champagne. And of course, I'm like, yeah, okay. Where's the word American on it? Okay. There's no such thing as, Amer well, there's no, there's no American on there. Okay. This is actually French champagne. It is a brute, is a non-vintage. Um, it has been made by, it's a collaboration between, uh, Sass Janison uh, in Vernizé, France, and um, uh, Champagne de Brune in Cezanne. Uh, and that's, um, oh dang it, I already forgot the name of that person. Um, nope, nope, nope. Not that, not that. Well, here we go. It helps if I just went right to the stupid page. So yeah, Manuel Janison and Roland de Brun. There we go. Uh, so they uh, collaborated. Uh, they have two areas in France. Um, so they supplied. And this has all three of the grapes in it. It has Pinot, de Mun Pinot Meunier, Pinot Noir, and Chardonnay in it. Um, it looks like it retails for about twenty bucks. Uh, at least that's what everything on the online said. So um, uh, what they in, in the little and this is Kirkland's or Costco's little newsletter. Uh, it says the Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier in the blend come from Janison's top-rated vineyards in Verzenay, while the Chardonnay comes from De Brun's vineyards in Cezanne. Um, so it's a you know it's a blend of all three. Now this, I mean, I'm gonna have to say it's unmistakably champagne. Um, you know, it has the typical, Mostly the typical bouquet. It still doesn't have the huge bakery thing, but it's it's got the fruit aspects. Um, you've got a bit of the apple and citrus. More specifically, the green apple. And a bit of uh, the pasta side of things. Um, very light on that. Let's check it out. find it. Os, try Osti Garcia. Okay. I will try to find that. Um, it's pretty decent. I just want to make sure that the green light's still on. It's kind of hard to see with the low light coming on me. As you can tell, the light, the ambient light has reduced a bit. Um, like you can tell, you can really tell there. Um, planning on getting two more lights next month to actually have a like a set light. Anyway, let's talk about the taste of this. It's pretty decent. Again, it's brute, so it's got a bit of sweetness to it. Um, nothing overly sweet. It's pretty much very the, the the bouquet and the palate are pretty much the same. Um, it's got that green apple uh, flavoring to it. That flavor, well, green apple flavors. It's got a bit of the pasta to it. Um, light to moderate acid. Um, it's not as focused as the cava. It's not even as focused as the Gloria. Um, it's not bad. I don't think it's worth $20. Um, I would probably score it more like an 86. Um, it's definitely better than these two. Um, I don't think it's as good as this. Um, but it's it's not bad. Again, you're looking for something that's halfway decent, um, especially in a champagne level at 20 bucks. It's kind of hard to find. Not hard, but you're not going to get really top quality champagne that's 20 bucks. Um, I mean, and I saw 
reviews all over the place about it. It was great. It was horrible. Um, you know, I, I I think a lot of people were like, oh, it's Kirkland. It's Costco brand. It's going to be crappy. No. Um, I mean, I, I've had Kirkland brand a lot of their stuff. You know, what not just wine. I've had their Kirkland brand other things. And they're decent quality. Um, are they going to be the top of the? Are they going to be the top of the category? No, but for what you're paying for, what you're getting, it's it, it's pretty fairly priced. I still would like to see this probably close to 15 bucks, but the fact of the matter, you know, might be that they can't sell it for 15 dollars and make a, a good enough profit off of it, um, depending on what the what type of contract they have with these guys and and all that. But um, 15 might be a little low. You maybe knock a couple dollars off, maybe 18. Uh, and I don't know how much it was actually, and this might be $18 at Costco right now. Um, you can't really go to Costco's site and find the price for it. So, um, and I haven't been to a Costco in a while. But I mean, I think the nose is the best of, of the bunch. Um, I just think the palette just didn't bring a whole heck of a lot to it. Not to, to give it an 88 or 89 or 90. Pretty decent. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but I only got three of these, which means a couple of these bottles are going to have to be going down pretty quickly tonight. You know, hey, I got UT playing, UT playing a uh, Cal in the Holiday Bowl tonight. Um, I know this is the New Year's Eve special and be out on Friday, so we should have won. We better have won. So, depending on how good the game goes, depends on which bottle or two I. Uh, I uh, imbibe. I'll probably start drinking it pretty quickly here because, yeah, I don't want to be drinking at 3 in the morning. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, I only have three of these to really preserve the wine, so I'm going to have to knock back a couple of these and me and the fam try to get rid of these bottles. Um, and, wow, such a hard... Isn't that such a hard task? Uh, Guncha. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Because what happens is that I'm not close enough to the to the thing to really see it that well. Um, but uh, you know, honestly, I mean, it, it's it's sparkling wine is something that is it's, we don't just kind of almost like rosés. Yeah, see the screen did it again. Um, it's like kind of like rosés. People don't really drink them. I think enough. They I think they have this mentality that. You can only drink champagnes or sparkling wines to celebrate something. I mean, even I'm mentioning, oh, the football game, depending on how well the game goes, I'll, I'll drink certain wines, you know? Um, but I do mention, like, and, and people who know me know I do this. You know, I'll get a, a glass of Prosecco or Cava or, or champagne or any type of sparkling wine. I'll eat it with my, I eat, I'll drink it with my salad uh, or an appetizer. Not all the time, but if, I, but, if the, but if the place I'm eating at has sparkling wine that you can get by the glass, then at least 50% of the time, I will get the sparkling wine first um, if I'm going to have like a salad or something the, the prior to the meal. If I'm just going to have dinner, then no, I'm probably not going to have a sparkling wine or any type of aperitif type of beverage. I'm going to go straight to whatever the wine that's going to pair well with the, um, with the meal. Um, sometimes I'll, if there's no sparkling wine or any wine I want to do as an aperitif, I just go in with, you know, based upon the whole experience, what wine is going to pair well with everything, but a lot of times I'll still with salad drink whites. If the meal is not a meal that goes with a white wine, I'll drink a red instead, but um, rosés are the same thing. No one really drinks rosés because they think it's white Zinfandel. It's not. All right, so um, that's it for the reviews. Um, real quickly, I just want to thank everyone for the past year. Um, the first few months, uh, obviously I couldn't do any of this, uh, so for those of you that uh, stuck it out with me and for that whole year that I couldn't do any alcohol related stuff other than um, educational things. I really appreciate that. I've gotten a lot of new followers, gotten a lot of new viewers. Viewership is up. Um, so that's great. Uh, TiVo I had a little blip with or a little glitch with TiVo and the RSS feed. I still have that. Some of the episodes aren't showing up. I'm going to work with Blip TV to see if we can figure out why uh, some of these episodes are not showing up on TiVo, um, which is my biggest viewer base of all. Um, looking forward to try to, uh, as far as revenue stuff, try to actually get maybe a little bit of an ad here and there inside. Something kind of like you would see from uh, some of the, the pioneers of, of, of podcasting, video, like, you know, Leo Laporte and, and Kevin Rose and all those, all those people. 
um, where you kind of have a little intro. This this show, you know, this episode is sponsored by so and so. Not that I would necessarily have a like a special URL that you could go to, but that makes it trackable for the sponsor, so that you go to www.abc def whatever dot com slash thirteen thirty seven wine for a special for the special offer instead of just or or you have a special code like uh, uh, some other podcasters have done so um, I'm going to maybe see approach that sometime you know throughout the the next year uh, I've got something that's honestly uh, I keep I I don't want to make it sound more secretive or more or more or or more uh, or bigger than it really is. But I do have something that I'm probably going to do sometime in June. I haven't come up with a specific date yet. That is going to, in my mind, be epic in the wine blogging, video wine blogging world. Uh, it, as far as I know, it's never been done. And I don't want to reveal too much of it because I don't want someone to steal my idea. Not that I've had any ideas stolen, I haven't. But if other people have hit the idea first because they thought of it before I did or they thought of it at the same time and they, did, they just did it. Um, a few people do know what the idea is. I'm going to have some people help me out with that. But um, uh, I am putting out there on Twitter that if you have, if you can source me some wines from places like China, India, um, the, the middle part where, uh, uh, well, there really aren't any wines probably in, in Uzbekistan and Pakistan and all that. But if there are, let me know. That'd be cool. Um, and some other wines like that. Uh, most of the other wines I'm able to, um, that I want to try to do this with, I'm going to be able to get locally. But there's some wines I just can't get. I'd like to try to find ways to get wines from uh, Hawaii and Alaska. Um, so um, something along those lines. I mean, you'll probably get an idea what I'm doing, but you won't know the entire idea until I reveal it. Um, so I am trying to get wines from all over the place. Um, so I can do that, and this, like I said, it's going to be sometime in June. And um, uh, let's see, what else? We've got that. Planning on taking the certified sommelier test. Uh, that's what I was, well, on the stream, um, someone saw me like tweeting, and I was, I was saying bring it, because uh, um, one of the other people on Twitter was uh, talking about uh, that they would put, us, put me in NMY, Matt, um, Matt Broussard, yes? Dang it! I can't remember Matt's last name. All right, now I gotta look it up. Anyway, um, he's out of he's another video wine blogger out of um, uh, Miami, I believe it is. That was Florida, but specifically I think it's Miami. Um, he's another wine blogger. Uh, does video, does some great stuff. You need to go check out his stuff too. MM Wine um, is his Twitter handle, and it's uh, um, uh, was it a. Uh, a fine time with wine, I believe, is the name of the blog. I'd have to look that up again. But um, anyway, he uh, he and I uh, were talking about doing uh, some stuff uh, about studying for certified and uh, snotty snob, snotty som, Laura de, de Pasquale. Uh, she was calling us out. She was like, "Happy, happy to kick your ass in some som shape anytime." So I say, "Bring it," because I need some getting get into shape of that. Uh, those are the big plans for the next year, other than just more content, try to improve the production quality, like I said, getting more lighting um, to help improve that type of stuff, and um, that's going to be it. I wish everyone a safe and happy uh, New Year's Eve. Don't be stupid. Um, if you're at someone's house partying and you had too much, stay there. Crash. Crash on the couch. Crash on the floor. Um, if you go out, be safe. Don't be, again, don't be stupid. Hopefully uh, you're one of those hotel packages so you can just crash at the hotel. If not, um, there's plenty of places out there that've got, especially if you're living in a place with good public transportation, they've got free rides so you don't even have to take the car to the place. You can take the, the train or the bus to where you're partying and then they have free, uh, you can take it free home. Uh, other places, lots of places around the country have, uh, you can call special numbers or where the, a tow truck will come get your car. And, and drive you back to your house. Uh, I think some of those are free, actually, but some of them you have to pay a little bit. So um, just be smart. There's a way to get home without being stupid. Um, I'm working that night, so uh, I, I will be coming home well after hopefully all the stupid people are off the roads. But um, 
Uh, so I won't be drinking anything to celebrate, but uh, I will be at work celebrating uh, with all the people there coming out to eat and drink and have a good time. And uh, that's going to be it. I will see everyone next year. Oh, and thanks for stopping by. Absolutely. And I'll try to do more of these. All right, that's it. Have a good one.